Rahayu, Madam. Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir. The deliberate spreading of falsehoods is not a novel phenomenon. For as long as human societies existed, there would always be incidents of rumours and truths being spread in various media. Such falsehoods affect people, relationships, the way people see things, and ultimately impacts on the society. Human societies have managed to cope and deal with such incidents and its consequences. However, with the advent of digital technology, the spread of falsehoods and its impact on communities have reached unprecedented levels. The spread of deliberate online falsehood is therefore of particular concern. Firstly, the manner in which we receive and share information has changed significantly. There are now many more information systems and platforms which translates to more means and ways by which falsehoods can be spread. With the proliferation via social media, falsehoods spread much faster. We now have the concept of going viral, a problem which we never had to deal with before. <clears throat> there is now instant communication, Twitter, Facebook, Messenger, Facebook Messenger, Instagram, Telegram, and with a click of a button, an individual could share information to many others almost immediately. On Facebook, an individual can share a post to 5,000 people. On a single WhatsApp group, you can have up to 256 members. Imagine the extent of the reach in numerous WhatsApp groups. Secondly, as individuals, we all receive and share information with the same groups of people. It is natural for people who think alike to come together and share views. The internet has made it easier for us to talk among ourselves with people of like-minded views. In such contexts, we end up confirming each other's pre-existing views and reinforce our own biases. Often in such groups, there is no other source of information coming into our circle. We therefore form echo chambers and this amplifies the impact of any falsehoods spread within the group. Thirdly, there are people taking advantage of the new means of human communication and the human psyche to spread falsehoods. The identities of those creating or proliferating falsehoods online are hidden behind a screen of anonymity such that they are emboldened to spread the falsehoods. There have been and will continue to be unsavoury people who use the online platforms to propagate falsehoods for their own desirable ends and to pursue their own agendas. In addition, it is observed that in many places, the mainstream media no longer holds the same degree of trust it had with the people. The people have a preference to refer to sources other than the mainstream media. The mainstream media now operates in a different environment where it can no longer operate as an effective check and balance on the proliferation of online falsehoods enabled by technology and social media. An indication of the severity of the spread of online falsehoods was given at the World Economic Forum in 2014, where the rapid spread of misinformation online was considered the 10th top trend of global significance. I believe we can all appreciate the significant adverse impact online falsehoods can have on communities. Mm -hmm. Just look at the buzz that was caused when many people received the message that NTUT Fairprice was giving out gift cards. A friend said that she saw a lady insisting for a gift card at one of the outlets. The implications can be even more serious. For example, when terror attacks occurred in Paris in November 2015, a video went viral claiming that London Muslims were celebrating the attacks. In reality, it was a video of a celebration of a victory by Pakistan in a cricket match. The hoax fed into the anger against Muslims in the aftermath of the Paris attacks. As a Muslim minority in Singapore, I cringe every time I hear news of terror attacks. I always worry about the distrust that could develop against the Muslims in Singapore. It is one of my greatest fears that an online falsehood could trigger anger against the Muslim community here. There could be disastrous implications if this happens in Singapore. The impact to Singapore may be irreversible. The problem of the spread of online falsehoods is a very real problem and merits immediate attention. <coughs> so we know the problem, but what do we do about it? There are numerous ways to address the spread of online falsehoods, but the current measures appear inadequate. Currently, there are statutes like the Telecommunications Act and the Broadcasting Act, which may apply, but there are gaps. 
For instance, under the Telecommunication Act, it is an offence to transmit a message knowing that it is false. However, in practice, this provision has been ineffective in properly addressing the spread of online falsehoods. The circulation of falsehoods is hard to circumvent, given how quickly they go viral today. One person could possibly be held accountable under the statute for sending the message containing the falsehood, but its virulent spread thereafter cannot be adequately dealt with using existing provisions in law. The technology companies are also making effort to take steps to stop the spread of falsehoods by flagging information to consumers or by taking down the posts which breach community standards. In December 2016, Facebook began showing a disputed warning next to articles that third-party checking websites said were fake news. However, researchers subsequently highlighted to Facebook that this method is ineffective as it was actually entrenching deeply held beliefs. Therefore, Facebook will no longer display these red warning icons, but instead display links to related articles next to the disputed news stories. There are also some ground-up efforts in fact of fact-checking that are emerging. In October 2017, NUS, SUTD, Google and the Media Literacy Council, supported by Straits Time, organised a hackathon to solve the problem of online falsehoods. This is an encouraging effort, but I believe it is still too early to tell how successful this will be in the fight against online falsehoods. The reality is that existing measures and efforts are not able to curb the spread of online falsehoods. The challenge is multifaceted and requires more than just one solution. The effort in fighting online falsehoods, therefore, has to be a concerted effort. I am very glad, therefore, that this motion has been put forth for a select committee to examine the various aspects of online falsehoods and propose some measures. I note the term of reference of the select committee set out in the motion and agree with the same. I would comment on the reference to possible legislative measures. This would indeed be a natural and obvious response. I trust, though, that the government will not only be considering legislative options. Although legislation would, reg legislate, would regulate conduct in relation to the spread of online falsehoods, I believe there are other efforts that could be put in place, including public education. I would therefore ask if the government could consider legislation as a part of a wider, more multi-pronged <coughs> approach. Deputy Speaker, allow me to say a few words in Malay. Perkembangan Teknologi digital pada zaman ini telah merubah cara kita berkomunikasi dan memberi kesan kepada penyebaran informasi. Satu kesan daripada hal ini adalah penyebaran pembohongan melalui internet pada skala yang tidak pernah kita lihat sebelum ini. Skala macam pembohongan boleh tersebar dengan begitu pantas sekali dan impaknya kepada masyarakat cukup mendalam. Saya beri contoh video yang menjadi viral yang kononnya menunjukkan penganut Islam di London meraihkan serangan pengganas di Paris pada November 2015. Sebenarnya video itu adalah rakaman sambutan satu kumpulan yang meraihkan kemenangan Pakistan dalam permainan kriket. Penipuan itu telah menambah rasa marah dan benci kepada masyarakat Islam selepas kejadian di Paris. Bayangkan kalau hal yang serupa berlaku di Singapura. Perhubungan antara kaum di Singapura mungkin retak dan kehidupan masyarakat majmuk di negara ini akan terjejas. Maka itu penting untuk kita cepat-cepat lakukan sesuatu untuk mengekang penularan pembohongan di internet. Usaha-usaha sedia ada tidak mencukupi untuk menangani masalah ini. Kita perlu fikirkan usaha yang lebih berkesan. Masalah pembohongan di internet bukanlah sesuatu yang boleh ditangani oleh satu pihak sahaja, pemerintah syarikat-syarikat teknologi, pihak media, masyarakat, semuanya perlu memainkan peranan. Kita perlu berusaha sebagai satu negara untuk mencapai penyelesaian yang berkesan. Maka itu, saya mengalu-alukan usul untuk membentuk jawatan kuasa pilihan bagi mengkaji isu penularan, pembohongan di internet dan menyarankan cara-cara mengatasinya. Deputy Speaker, I support this motion.